In today's quick Thursday tip, we're going to talk about Power Apps errors. So we're going to use that function to sort out an issue with one of the apps that I recently built because what better way to teach you than show you where I screwed up and how I could have done better. Should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to look at the errors function in Power Apps. And you know, this is one I haven't used a lot, especially in videos, but I realized that the app that I just built last weekend that you all loved and watched a million times, it had a small boo-boo the first time I actually gave it to my kid to use. And what better test subject than my children using the app? So what I thought we'd do is go over and learn a little bit about the errors function. And then once we understand how it works, at least at a you know quick enough level that we get our heads wrapped around it, then we will switch over into my app and we'll fix my app because I think that's more interesting. I show you what I should have done better. Also show you the other way I could have avoided the errors. Right? There's like two different ways to go with this. So we're gonna talk through both of those. Should be interesting. Let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, over here on the desktop, we're going to jump in. So this is the app we're gonna fix, my juggle tracker. And what I realized, I guess I should have left this open, is that I didn't do any validation. So my record, right, when I patch this to the data source, it requires the title field to be set, but I didn't do anything here to force it. So when I gave it to the younger kid, he just plopped right in here and said, start session. Let's get her done. He lost some like, fun little message. And then he got built all this fun Good stuff. Good job, buddy. Good and job, buddy. once he was done, he hit finish session and everything looked normal to him, but when I got the report in my email, it's like all the data was missing. And But from a user perspective, it's like, mm, everything's great. And he was really angry because he had a 17, and that was a really high number for the young one. So anyway, how do we fix this? And if we go back in here to like editor mode, you can see there's an error, and it says the title field is required. So I didn't patch the right data. Ugh. But I didn't stop him from going forward. So what happens a lot of times for us, let's go over here, let's just make a new screen again is we end up with some type of scenario where we're like, all right, I got a button here. And so on this button, I'm gonna do two things, right? I'm going to patch a data source. I'm gonna like patch um, employees, right? That's the SharePoint list I was using. Nope, it was Juggle Tracker. So patch Juggle Tracker main. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do defaults Juggle Tracker main so we can make a new one, right? We know that, that's how you make it. And then in here, I had something, you know, basically this one has a title field and then it also has a um, touches field, I think was the other one. Oh, I asked fill on title and we'll do test and then we'll do touches, total touches, 12. Okay, so that right there, that's a valid patch statement for this data source. So we press the button, you know, turns gray, comes back, blue, everything is great. But in his, I was taking a text input or that drop down, and I was uh, moving forward, right? So we had like a quick little drop down here. So let's just do inputs, drop down. And in the drop down, I had allow empty selection set to true. So that way it would come in blank. So when he jumped in, it was like that. Okay. So if we go here now and say, hey, for the title, I want to patch, what's the name of that drop down? Drop down two. We want to patch drop down two dot selected dot value. So if we do that, and now if we hit play and press the button, right, nothing happens, but we get an error message. And if we go in here, as a maker, we get the error message. And the message is very straightforward, right? We hover, the field title is required. Ah, that's right. He didn't do the thing. But you notice that it moved on, right? It, it didn't tell him that anything bad had happened. And worse yet, if we go right here, and so a lot of times we will do a patch and then we will navigate away. So we're going to navigate just back to the welcome screen. So now if we do this, what's going to happen, right? If we leave it blank, it errors, but it navigates. So he has no idea that his data didn't get saved. And that's what's happening in my uh, real version of the app. So what I want to introduce you guys to today is that there is a function that can help us. And that function, we're going to use a, let's use a label for a moment, is it's going to be a, um, it's called the errors function. So if you do errors, not error, but errors, and then a parenthesis, and then your data source. So in our case, juggle, juggle tracker main, 
What that is going to do is that returns a table of data. And so with that highlighted, I can do this. Right? It's like, oh, I didn't find anything. You did. But it returns a table. We can't show a table in a label. You, know, you probably knew that already. Um, but what we can do when you have a table of data, we want the first record from that, right? So what we do, we'll just say, give me the first record. That gives us a record. We still can't show a record inside of a label. Fair enough. But then finally, we can say, show me the message. And so then that would actually be the text from the error as it happened. And so what's really interesting about that, so when you got that down to a text, it's not showing right now because Power Apps likes to annoy you. But what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, before, instead of navigating away, what I want you to do is I want you to notify with all that. So give me whatever text is there. So now if we press the button, you can see that the label updated and the notify updated field title is required. So we're able to see the error message. But if we patch it successfully, it's going to, oh, it's clear, let's just notify. Notify, you're annoying sometimes. So if we go here and we put in a value, so then the patch would be successful if we press the button, now errors becomes blank. So the errors table basically is updated every time that um, you try to patch the data or interact, you know, edit the data source in any way. And so, when it got, when we did the second patch that was successful, it said, oh, I have no errors. And so now there are no errors, and so it's happy. So now that we understand that, hopefully, what I want you to see here is that we can add some functionality here. So let's do our patch. And so we know it's a table. So I'm going to say, hey, if is empty, remember that's your function for checking if a table is empty, if empty, errors, errors, and then a juggle tracker main. So if that table is empty, and think of it as blank for a record, but is empty checks a table, so that's why we're not using is blank. If that's empty, then I want to navigate to the welcome screen. So if there was no errors, take me to the welcome screen. If there are errors, then just notify me and leave me here. So we'll go to the end there, we'll close our if, and let's see, what is it mad about? Um, I'm guessing I didn't close something. If, oh, there should be two parentheses right there. There we go. So if is error, empty error. So if there's no errors, navigate to welcome. If there is an error, do first errors. So now if we set this to nothing, so this is blank, there should be an error, hit the button. Ah, build title is required. So we're, we're showing them an error message. And if we want to make that just a little snazzier, let's make that notify a little bit better. Remember with notify, you're able to uh, come in here and so you can do the type of notifications. I want it to be an error, so it'll be red, and then have it automatically go away after three seconds because I'm tired of having to close it. So now if we try and click field titles required, it disappears again. And so then the user's like, oh yeah, that's right. I need to do this. And then now it patches and goes away. Yay! So that is what I'm after for you guys, is this idea that we can use errors and if it's uh, empty, then nothing bad happened. We can move forward. If it's not empty, then, you know, we have inside errors. We have the whole table of errors. And so then you can, you know, look at the uh, first record and you can say, hey, what's the message? Or there's the column or even the error. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go about that. Okay, now the other thing that I probably should have done in this one that I didn't do is the better or the the belt and suspenders the, the really what I'd prefer you do is I should have went here to display mode and said hey you if is blank oh yeah right we're switching back to is blank drop down to dot selected dot value right because that's the thing we're trying to write to the title column so if that's blank we know it's going to fail then we're just going to disable this button. And if not, we're going to leave it in edit mode like so. So then now the beauty of this is if this is empty, then the button's grayed out. They can't click on it, right? That, that's the that's a better solution, at least on the, the front end, right? That makes a better user experience. But then if you need to validate, because sometimes your errors are because you're not patching, you know, this is a very simple error I was able to reproduce quickly and easily for you guys. But sometimes your errors are because you have conflicts or your errors are because, you know, 
the data source ran out or the timeout, or, right? There can be a thousand different reasons that this fails. So if you wanna make sure that your users can't go forward if the patching fails or the submitting fails or you know any of those types of scenarios, if you wanna make sure they can't go forward, then this is what you're checking for, right? We're looking to see, is there any errors in the data source right now? If there's not, navigate away. If there is, in this case, I'm showing you how to show them that that's happening, okay? That's what I want you to take out of this, is that little nugget. And errors is a lot more complicated than that, or not more complicated, errors has a lot more functionality. As you notice, there was other different, you know, there's different types of columns here. There's the message, there's the column, there's the actual error, there's the record. There's a lot of additional details with it, but that gets you overwhelmed. If you're watching this video, I wanted to just try to get you started thinking about this. If you go check the documentation over here in this other tab I'm gonna open, right here, you can look in here and you're gonna see that there's also, you can get the different the error kinds. So maybe you wanna have it do different things. There's also the ability to use data source info and validate, right? This topic can get a lot more complex, but the easy, you've never done error checking before, just check to see if errors is blank or not, get you going. You also might notice that there is a if error and an is error over here. These are newer. These require you to turn on an experimental formula management functionality, so I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but I didn't want you to find these. Why didn't Shane tell me about these? Because since these are still experimental, I'm not you know, flipping switches in my app to use them yet, but you're welcome to. Check them out, play with them, have fun with them, but that's why I didn't cover these even though they exist. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do real quick is show you how I actually fixed my kids app because like I said, my kids use this every day. So I did a couple things. The first thing I wanted to do over here was fix the display mode. And you can see I kind of keep toggling it back and forth so that I can, I have the bad version of the code and I have the good version of the code. But there you go. So now this won't let um, the youngest especially choose it unless he chooses his name from the dropdown. All right, that was the first fix. The other thing is then on select what I did, so you can see this in action, and apparently I messed it up because it's got some type of error in here. Oh, so Power Apps just knows that the, there's errors around that still, so that's why that's there, ignore that. But so what I did is I said, hey, if, is it not if it's an empty juggle tracker main, I don't know why I did it backwards, but I, I usually do, I, I, I just do. So if there's, if it's not empty, um, then I want to notify, right? That's the, hey, fail to start the session, error, and I show the actual error message. Notification type is error and a three. And then if it is empty, then I set the variables and navigate like we talked about in the previous uh, video. If you haven't watched the video, it's a fun little app. So and it has a lot of great uh, stuff, but now you can see that, you know, it just doesn't let them click through. They choose, oh yeah, I'm Chewy. And then they can start their session. And I know Let's it's working it because there it is up here at the top. You know, Angie heard my lovely voice. Okay, this was a little bit longer than I wanted, but hopefully this helps you guys. If you want to see more content like this and errors and stuff, leave comments, you have questions, ideas, throw them down below. Remember, I've got my live training classes coming up into February and then in March. If you want to like super nerd learn this and spend five fun-filled day with me, then check those out. All right, and with all that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you wanna to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all, I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.